Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials Video 72. It's on electrostatic induction, which is the ability to charges in one object to affect charges in another object. And so an example of this is, is static electricity. And so as this child went down the slide, friction of their hair on the slide actually pulled electrons off. And so now all their hair have positive charges. And so that induction of the hair itself is pushing on all the other positive hairs. And so we get this crazy looking hair. And a good way to study this in the science lab is to use something called an electroscope. And so what we have is a metal ball at the top connected to a metal rod that goes through the middle and then we have metal leaves on the bottom. And so these are all insulated from the surroundings because we have a rubber stopper that goes right around here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to charge up a glass rod. And so we're going to charge up a rod like that. And so what you're doing is actually pulling electrons off of it and now we have a positive rod. It's just like the hair of the child. And so as you pull it close to the electroscope, what's going on is induction here. So it's impacting the charges within the electroscope. Watch what happens as we pull it away. The leaves go back to where they were. As we put it closer, there's induction going on. As we pull it away, they go back. What happens if we actually touch it? So if I touch that, now conduction takes place. So we're actually transferring charges. And watch what happens as I pull it away. Those leaves are going to be held apart. So to understand what's going on at the charge level, you really have to understand what electrostatic induction is. And so a charged object can be charged through friction, like rubbing your hair on a balloon, or it could also be conduction, touching another charged object. And so depending on what that charged object is, maybe it's a conductor like a metal, the electrons in there are mobile. They can move around and that charge is going to start to dissipate or at least move within the object itself. If it's an insulator, all of those charges or those electrons are fixed. And so we can add charges to one part of it and it doesn't mean the rest of it has to stay charged. But if we take a charged object and we add it to a system, we're going to change the distribution of the charges within that system. And so if we do induction, it means we're going to move it next to another object, but we're not physically touching it. And if we're doing conduction, then we're going to physically touch it. And so what are these charges? Remember, it's going to be the electrons and the protons in the atoms that make up the material itself. And so if we have a neutral object, that means we're going to have an equal number of positive and negative charges. They're going to balance out and there's going to be no net charge. Now, what does a charged object look like? Well, in this case, we have way more negative charges. And so this is going to be a negatively charged object. What's it going to look like if we pull those those electrons away. Now we're going to have a positively charged object. But remember, the protons are going to stay where they are. It's always the electrons that are moving. Now, how is an insulator different from a conductor? Well, in an insulator, like in glass or in plastic, all those electrons are fixed. And so they can move a little bit, but they're always going to be stuck to that proton of the atom of which they're a part. Now, how's that different in a conductor? In a conductor, remember, those electrons are mobile. It's a sea of electrons. And so those electrons can move around. And so when we're looking at a charged um, conductor and a charged insulator, they're going to behave in different ways. And so if we've got a neutral insulator like this, so this is a neutral insulator up here, so we've got an equal number of positive and negative charges, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some negative charges to it. So when I add those negative charges like that, those electrons are fixed in their position. They can't dance from atom to atom. And so what are we going to have now? A charged insulator where the, the left side in this diagram is going to have a negative charge and the right side is going to have a neutral charge. Now, how is that different than a conductor? Well, same thing. We're going to start with a neutral conductor now and I'm going to add a bunch of charges to it, same location. But what happens with these electrons is they can move I and mean, they hate being around other electrons and so they're going to spread out and that charge is going to start to be on the outside of that conductor. So remember, in a conductor, if we're ever dealing with metal, those electrons are moving. But if we're dealing with an insulator, they're going to remain fixed in position. And so what is polarization? It's when I can take a charged object like this, one where we have a lot of electrons, and as I move it near a neutral object, what's going on? You can see those electrons are moving. So we know right away that this is going to be 
um, a conductor since the electrons are moving. But since it's not touching, now we have electrostatic induction taking place. What happens if I actually touch it? Now we have conduction. Those charges can actually flow from one to another. So now let's go back to the electroscope and try to, try to discover what's going on at the charge level. So again, I took a glass rod and then I charge it. And so what I'm really doing is pulling the electrons away. And as I move it close to that electroscope, we can see that those leaves at the bottom, those metal leaves are moving apart. And so let's kind of draw the charges out here. So this has a positive charge on, on our rod. So we've removed electrons from it. So why do we have a bunch of electrons up here? Well, as we move the positive charges close to the conductor, the electrons in the whole conductor itself, remember this whole thing is connected, those electrons are moving up because they're attracted to the positive charges in the rod. What does that leave behind? It leaves behind all these positive charges. And since we have positive charges on this side, positive charges on that side, they're pushing against each other and that force is actually causing those metal leaves to move apart. If I move the rod away, it goes back to where it was. Those electrons are just going to dissipate and now we have a neutral electroscope. What happens, however, if I touch it, if there's conduction taking place, I pull it away and those leaves stay there. Again, what's going on? Well, we, st we still have these positive charges up here. We have these, these uh, electrons that moved up, so we have these negative charges over here. But since I'm physically touching it, there's now a pathway for those electrons to move. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna migrate over there. Now this is going to be a neutral object over here, but what we've left behind are all these positive charges. Since we pulled those electrons away through conduction, now we We've left with just the positive charges. All those positive charges are pushing on each other, and then the leaves are going to separate. Now, let's say we were to try, instead of a positive object, we were to try a negative object. So let's say we try a plastic at this point. We're rubbing the plastic. In this case, what we're doing is we're actually adding electrons to it. As I move it next to that electroscope, same thing happens. So what's going on there? Well, now we have the negative charges over here. So in the conductor of the electroscope, what happened to those electrons? Again, they're repelled by the electrons in this plastic rod, and so they're moving down to the bottom. And since we now have a bunch of negative charges on either side, then it's pushing them away. What happens when we get conduction with a plastic rod? Again, if we look at it at the level of the charges, since this is negative charges right here, as we pull it closer, all the negatives go down to the bottom, but these are not fixed. Once we touch it, these electrons can actually move through the conductor. And as they do that, we add a bunch of electron, uh, or we add a bunch of electrons to the conductor. It now has a negative charge, and that's a permanent negative charge. It's going to stay that way until we can transfer those electrons somewhere else. So, did you learn to make predictions about the distribution of charge using friction? Again, when we're rubbing an object, we can actually pull electrons off or add electrons to it. Conduction, we're touching two objects so electrons can move, but induction, we're just moving where they are because they're not physically touching. Could you make predictions about the distribution when we're polarizing an object? Electrons, again, are moving. Could you construct a representation of how charges are going to be different in an insulator versus a conductor? Remember, in an insulator, the charges are going to stay. They're going to be fixed wherever you put them, but in a charge conductor, they're going to move away from each other. And then finally, could you explain the results of an electroscope, for example, using charge and these ideas of induction and conduction. I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.